The 70s were an experimental time for snack foods. Companies weren't afraid to get creative, even if some of those snacks didn't stand the test of time. Let's kick things off with some of the most unforgettable treats that sadly disappeared from grocery store shelves. Number one, aspic salads. Aspic salads were a hallmark of mid-20th century dining, particularly popular in the 1970s. These gelatin-based dishes were a creative, often elaborate way to present both savory and sweet ingredients. The gelatin, typically made from unflavored powdered gelatin or condensed broth, acted as a mold to encase various components like meats, seafood, vegetables, or fruits. The concept originated in Europe, where aspic was considered a sign of culinary sophistication. By the 1970s, American home cooks embraced it, with recipes often appearing in cookbooks and on dinner party menus. The appeal of aspic salads came from their eye-catching presentation. Clear gelatin allowed the vibrant colors of vegetables, such as carrots, peas, and bell peppers, to shine through. Common savory ingredients included boiled eggs, cold cuts, ham, chicken, and shrimp. The texture of aspic, however, was divisive. Some found the jiggly consistency unappealing, while others enjoyed its refreshing coldness and versatility. The rise of processed and prepackaged foods in the 70s made aspic salads more accessible, thanks to the convenience of gelatin packets and canned meats or vegetables. Popular variations included tomato aspic, which had a tangy, slightly acidic flavor, and seafood aspic, which was often served as an appetizer. By the late 1970s, however, the trend began to wane as tastes shifted towards fresher, less processed foods. The labor-intensive nature of aspic salads, combined with changing food preferences, led to their eventual decline. Today, aspic salads are mostly seen as a retro curiosity, though some chefs and food enthusiasts are reviving them as a nod to vintage culinary traditions. Number two, banana flip snack cakes. Banana flip snack cakes were a beloved treat in the 1970s, particularly known for their distinctive banana flavor and soft cake-like texture. Produced by companies like Nichols Bakery, the banana flip was shaped like a folded over cake, almost like a giant taco with a creamy, fluffy filling in the middle. The banana-flavored sponge cake was incredibly moist, and the whipped filling provided a sweet, light contrast, making it a perfect snack or dessert option for those craving something fruity yet indulgent. What set the banana flip apart was its flavor profile. Unlike many modern banana-flavored products that use artificial flavors, the banana flip was praised for its more natural-tasting banana essence, which made it stand out among other snack cakes of the time. It was often included in kids' lunch boxes or bought as an after-school snack, and it developed a loyal following. Despite its popularity, the banana flip was eventually discontinued, leaving fans longing for its return. Although some modern brands have attempted to replicate the flavor and texture, the original remains a nostalgic food item that many 70s kids remember fondly but few can still find. Its disappearance has turned it into a symbol of lost snacks from a simpler time. Number three, Tang Drink Mix. Tang Drink Mix was first introduced by General Foods in 1959, but it gained significant popularity in the 1960s and 1970s due to its association with NASA's space program. The powdered orange flavored drink became a symbol of modern convenience and technology when it was sent into space with astronauts on the Gemini and Apollo missions. This clever marketing connection made Tang an iconic product of the 70s, where its futuristic appeal resonated with consumers fascinated by space exploration. Tang's bright orange color and strong citrus flavor were designed to appeal to both kids and adults. It was an instant drink mix, meaning that you only needed to add water to create a glass of sweet, orange-flavored liquid. In an era obsessed with convenience foods, Tang fit right in, offering families an easy alternative to freshly squeezed juice. However, its taste has always been polarizing. Some found it refreshing, while others criticized its overly sweet artificial flavor. Despite its peak popularity in the 70s, Tang eventually fell out of favor as health trends shifted away from sugary, processed drinks. 
However, it remains available today in certain markets, and it's still a nostalgic product for those who grew up with it. Tang's lasting cultural impact comes from its unique connection to the space race, making it more than just another drink mix. It was a symbol of progress and innovation at the time. Number four, Swanson TV dinners. Swanson TV dinners revolutionized the way Americans ate meals at home, especially during the 1970s. First introduced in 1953, these frozen meals became household staples by the 70s, offering convenience to families and busy individuals. The concept of TV dinners was simple, but impactful. A complete meal, including a main dish and sides, served in a divided aluminum tray that could be heated up and eaten in front of the television, a growing cultural habit during this period. Swanson's meals typically featured classic American comfort foods, such as Salisbury steak, turkey with stuffing, fried chicken, and meatloaf. Each section of the tray separated different food items, mashed potatoes, green beans, or peas, and often a dessert like apple cobbler, ensuring nothing mixed until it was time to eat. The convenience of simply popping a frozen tray into the oven appealed to those looking to avoid the hassle of cooking from scratch, particularly with more women joining the workforce during the 70s. Swanson capitalized on the idea of quick, easy meals for the modern family, often marketing TV dinners as a way to enjoy homemade food without the effort. However, the nutritional quality of these meals was often questioned, as they were high in sodium and preservatives. Still, the cultural impact of Swanson TV dinners was undeniable, shaping the convenience food industry and influencing modern frozen meals. Number five, freshen up gum. Freshen up gum launched in the early 1970s, was a unique product that stood out due to its liquid-filled center. This innovative design set it apart from traditional gums of the time. Biting into Freshen Up released a burst of flavored liquid, a surprise that made the gum both refreshing and memorable. It came in several flavors, including spearmint, peppermint, cinnamon, and bubble gum, each offering its own twist on the classic chewing gum experience. The marketing for Freshen Up played heavily on the liquid center surprise, often portraying it as an exciting and refreshing mouthful. The gum was particularly popular with kids and teenagers who were drawn to its novelty factor. However, its flavor, while initially strong, was known to fade quickly, leaving a short-lived chewing experience compared to other gums on the market. Despite its popularity in the 70s and 80s, Freshen Up eventually fell out of favor, largely due to changing tastes and competition from longer-lasting gums. By the late 1990s, it had mostly disappeared from store shelves, though it remains a nostalgic memory for those who enjoyed its unique burst of liquid. Number 6. Pronto Pancake Mix Pronto Pancake Mix, introduced in the 1970s, was a revolutionary product designed for ultimate convenience. Unlike traditional pancake mixes that required the addition of eggs or milk, Pronto was an all-in-one solution. It came in a bottle or carton where users only needed to add water, shake, and pour the batter directly onto a hot griddle. This innovation made it easier than ever for families to whip up a batch of pancakes without the mess or effort typically involved in homemade batter preparation. The appeal of Pronto Pancake Mix was its promise of fast and effortless breakfast preparation. Targeting busy parents and growing families, the product fit right into the era's increasing demand for convenience foods. The pancakes produced by Pronto were light and fluffy, with a mild flavor that was designed to be enhanced with syrup, butter, or fruit toppings. However, despite its practicality, the mix didn't last long on the market. Changes in consumer preferences, which started leaning toward more natural and less processed foods by the 1980s, likely contributed to its decline. Still, Pronto Pancake Mix remains a nostalgic memory for those who recall the ease of flipping pancakes without any fuss. Number 7. Kugel Flavored Peanut Spread Kugel-flavored peanut spread, introduced by Kraft in the 1970s, was a bold attempt to reinvent the classic peanut butter. What made Kugel stand out was its range of unique flavors. In addition to the standard peanut butter taste, Kugel came in four distinct varieties, banana, chocolate, vanilla, and cinnamon. 
This unusual combination aimed to appeal to kids and families looking for something different in their lunchboxes. Kugel wasn't just about flavor, its texture was also notable. It had a smoother, creamier consistency than traditional peanut butter, making it easy to spread on bread or crackers. The packaging was equally playful, featuring a colorful mascot with googly eyes that match the fun, quirky product. Kraft's marketing heavily targeted children, with catchy jingles and TV ads emphasizing the novelty and excitement of flavored peanut butter. Despite its initial success and strong brand identity, Kugel didn't last long. By the early 1980s, changing consumer preferences and the rise of more health-conscious products led to its discontinuation. However, it remains a nostalgic favorite for many who grew up during its brief but memorable run. Number eight, Libby's Fruit Float. Libby's Fruit Float was a unique dessert mix introduced in the 1970s, designed to create a light and airy fruit-flavored mousse with minimal effort. The appeal of Fruit Float was its simplicity. Home cooks could whip up a layered, frothy dessert in minutes just by adding water and mixing the powder. The result was a dessert that had two textures, fluffy on top and a fruit-filled layer at the bottom, creating a visually appealing and light-tasting treat. Libby's marketed the product as a versatile option, available in a variety of fruit flavors like strawberry, orange, and peach. It could be served at family dinners, potlucks, or picnics, making it a popular choice for busy households looking for a quick and easy dessert solution. Fruit Float tapped into the growing demand for convenience foods during the 1970s, fitting well with the era's fascination with instant processed products. Despite its popularity, Libby's Fruit Float eventually disappeared from grocery shelves by the early 1980s, as consumer preferences shifted towards fresher, more natural foods. However, for those who grew up with it, Fruit Float remains a nostalgic symbol of 1970s dessert trends. Number 9. Ralston's Crazy Cow Cereal. Ralston's Crazy Cow Cereal, introduced in the mid-1970s, was a highly innovative product that combined breakfast cereal with a fun twist. It came in two flavors, chocolate and strawberry. What made Crazy Cow unique was its coating. When milk was poured over the cereal, the coating would dissolve, turning the milk into a sweet flavored drink, much like chocolate or strawberry milk. This transformation was a major selling point, appealing to children who enjoyed the novelty of colorful, flavored milk with their breakfast. The cereal itself was shaped like small, crunchy puffs, and the box featured a playful cow mascot, which reinforced the fun, whimsical nature of the product. Crazy Cow's marketing was heavily targeted at kids, with commercials and advertisements promoting the idea that the cereal could magically change milk's flavor. Despite its initial popularity, Crazy Cow didn't last long on the shelves. By the early 1980s, it was discontinued, likely due to the growing competition in the cereal market and a shift towards more health-conscious breakfast options. However, its brief run left a lasting impression on many 70s and 80s kids, making it a nostalgic favorite. Number 10. Chicken Dinner Candy Bars Chicken Dinner Candy Bars were an iconic yet oddly named candy from the early 20th century, introduced by the Sperry Candy Company in 1923. Despite what the name might suggest, the candy bar contained no chicken or any savory ingredients at all. Instead, it was a nutty, nougat-filled confection covered in chocolate. The name Chicken Dinner was a marketing ploy meant to evoke the idea of prosperity and wholesomeness, tying the candy to the era's cultural emphasis on wholesome family meals during post-World War I America. The Chicken Dinner was a symbol of wealth and luxury in the 1920s, so this branding was a clever nod to the idea that eating the candy was as satisfying as a full meal. The candy bar was a popular favorite through the 1920s and 1930s, and its packaging often featured images of chickens and farm themes to reinforce the wholesome image. Chicken Dinner Candy bars were sold for a nickel, making them affordable during the Great Depression. However, by the 1960s and 70s, as newer candy bars emerged and consumer tastes shifted, Chicken Dinner candy bars faded from the market, becoming a relic of a different time in American confectionery history. Number 11, Chocodiles 
Chocodiles were a chocolate-covered variation of the classic Twinkie snack cake introduced by Hostess in the 1970s. The concept was simple yet irresistible. The familiar golden sponge cake filled with creamy vanilla filling, but this time fully coated in a layer of smooth milk chocolate. This fusion of two beloved dessert flavors, cake and chocolate, made Chocodiles an instant hit among snack lovers. The product was marketed as a more indulgent, supercharged version of the already popular Twinkie. And Hostess used catchy slogans like, it takes a while to eat a Chocodile to emphasize the richness of the snack. Unlike traditional Twinkies, which were often associated with lightness and portability, Chocodiles offered a denser, richer experience. Despite the popularity of the product, distribution was limited, with Chocodiles primarily available on the West Coast, making them a rare treat for fans in other regions of the U.S. As the years passed, Chocodiles were discontinued in the early 2000s, but have since seen limited time revivals, much to the delight of nostalgic fans. Number 12. Funny Face Drink Mix Funny Face Drink Mix was a powdered drink mix introduced by Pillsbury in the 1960s, aimed primarily at children. It was designed as a direct competitor to Kool-Aid but with a unique twist. Each flavor of Funny Face came with a quirky cartoon mascot, such as Goofy Grape, Jolly Ollie Orange, Freckle Face Strawberry, and Rootin' Tootin' Raspberry. These playful characters quickly caught the attention of kids, making the drink mix a fun and engaging product. One of the standout features of Funny Face was its focus on being sugar-free, which was unusual for the time. Pillsbury initially used artificial sweeteners in its formula, appealing to health-conscious parents. However, the early versions faced backlash for the flavor of the artificial sweeteners, prompting Pillsbury to reformulate the product to include sugar in later versions. Another notable aspect of Funny Face was its marketing. The advertising was bold and colorful, with TV commercials featuring animated versions of the mascots, which helped drive its popularity. Despite its initial success, Funny Face eventually faded from shelves in the 1980s, though it remains a fond memory for many who enjoyed its playful approach to drink mixes. Number 13, Fruit Brute Cereal. Fruit Brute was part of General Mills' famous Monster Cereals line. Introduced in 1974, the cereal featured a werewolf mascot named Fruit Brute, who joined Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Boo Berry in this monster-themed series. Unlike its chocolate and berry-flavored counterparts, Fruit Brute had a fruity flavor, with citrus and cherry notes combined with marshmallow bits. The combination of colorful cereal and marshmallows was a hit with kids, and the werewolf mascot, often howling for his cereal, added a fun, spooky element to breakfast. The packaging was vibrant, featuring the cartoon werewolf in a green and orange color scheme, designed to catch the eye of children in the cereal aisle. However, despite being part of a popular cereal franchise, Fruit Brute didn't enjoy the same lasting success as Count Chocula or Frankenberry. It was discontinued in 1982, only to return briefly in 2013 as a limited edition release for nostalgic fans. Although Fruit Brute had a relatively short lifespan, it left a lasting impact on fans of the monster cereals, with some collectors still hunting down original boxes as rare memorabilia. Its reintroduction in the 2010 S shows the enduring charm and nostalgia of the monster cereals lineup. Number 14, Regal Crown Sours. Regal Crown Sours were an iconic candy, first introduced in the 1950s, known for their intensely tart and tangy flavors. These hard candies were individually wrapped and came in small tin containers, which made them feel premium compared to other sweets of the time. The most popular flavors included lemon, cherry, and apple, each delivering a strong punch of sourness that lingered on the taste buds. The lemon variety in particular was renowned for its sharp, zesty flavor, making it a favorite among those who craved a more extreme sour experience. Regal Crown Sours stood out in an era when most candies were sweet and mild, offering something different for adventurous candy lovers. Despite their popularity in the 60s and 70s, they became harder to find by the 80s. 
eventually disappearing from the mainstream market. However, nostalgia for these sour treats has remained strong, and they have been revived in recent years by specialty candy retailers. Their unique combination of tartness and the distinctive tin packaging made Regal Crown Sours a memorable part of mid-century candy culture. Number 15, Oven Fried Chicken by Shake and Bake. Oven Fried Chicken by Shake and Bake was introduced in the mid-1960s by Kraft, offering a convenient way for families to enjoy crispy fried chicken without the mess of deep frying. The product consisted of seasoned breading mix that home cooks could use by coating pieces of chicken. The process was simple. Place the chicken in a bag with the shake and bake mix. Shake it to cover the meat and then bake it in the oven. This method created a crispy, flavorful crust on the chicken, mimicking the texture of traditional fried chicken. Shake and Bake's oven fried chicken was especially popular during the 1970s, a decade when convenience foods were booming due to more women entering the workforce. Families wanted quick, easy to prepare meals that didn't compromise on taste. Shake and Bake provided a solution for busy households that still wanted a homemade, comforting meal. The breading mix came in different flavors, including original, BBQ, and extra crispy, allowing for variety. While still available today, the cultural impact of Shake and Bake was most significant in the 70s and 80s, when it became a staple in many American households.